Okay, hey, I'm Barrett Clark. Um, it's an honor to be here. Thank you, Jim. This was my first Ruby conference uh, a long time ago, uh, and I'm excited to be here today on the stage. Okay, a juicy melt in your mouth brisket. A well orchestrated system. These things don't just happen, they come from experience. And experience comes from iteration, right? You might say iteration yields experience. <laughs> and maybe that seems kind of obvious, and you're saying, hey, where's this thing going? <laughs> I'm talking about uh, building the ability to find and discern useful information efficiently. What's important and what's just noise? <laughs> when you're starting something out, right, you have to figure out all the fundamentals, how you set out, uh, what are the tools that I need to operate in this thing, how do I even begin? And so you make a thing, and you learn something. And you make another thing, and you learn some more. And you make some more things, and you learn. You learn how to move around in that environment. You learn the idioms of the language. You learn what to do when something goes wrong. You understand that tool set. You begin to recognize and consolidate information. You're able to discern these things. It's kind of like a map reduce for your brain, right? We have a saying where I work. Uh, I work at Saber Labs. We have a saying. Uh, that, inf that uh, answers need a place to land. So what this means, uh, information in general isn't really all that useful unless you have something to do with it. So I could tell you, you know, 27, and well, what is 27? So we take this wall of useless information, and everybody's seen this, right? Take this wall of useless information and turn it into something like this. Or this. So let's talk about my brisket. Here's the uh, short and sweet version of the recipe. It's pretty simple, right? Now, recipes are usually just a guideline, I think. Uh, but this actually is a pretty important step. Get the brisket. Uh, then you're going to trim the fat if, if you want to. Maybe you bought one that's already trimmed. And I like to score it. That's cut not really deep, but just kind of cut some lines in it, cross hatch. That gives you a little more surface area for the smoke to absorb into, for the rub to settle into. And then you're going to put the rub on the brisket. Now maybe you've made your own, and that's great. I encourage you to experiment. Uh, maybe you've bought one. That's also fine. Keep in mind, this is a little soapbox here, keep in mind uh, salt is not, should not be the leading ingredient. Salt's a flavor enhancer. Salt should not be the main ingredient should not be the main flavor. It's a supporting role. OK, so you're going to take your grill, your smoker, your big green egg, whatever, and you've figured out through all this iteration how to regulate the temperature. So you're going to set it to 225 degrees. And you're going to set it for an indirect heat, which means that the, the coals and the meat are either offset or there's some barrier between them. So you don't want direct heat on the brisket because it's going to sit there for hours. So I use a big green egg and there's a ceramic plate that sits between them. If you use one of those Weber grills, you would just offset it. 225 degrees indirect. And you're going to get some wood chips. Maybe you soak them, maybe you don't. Honestly, I don't know that it matters. I like to use a combination of pecan chunks and apple um, chips. Apple the wood, not the fruit. Okay, another really important step, you're going to put the brisket in the smoker. And then it's going to do something at about 160 degrees, where it's going to stall. And science is happening, you can go research that. But uh, what you can do is call the Texas Crutch, what I do, Texas Crutch. It's totally cheating and it's totally fine. You take that brisket and you wrap it in a couple of layers of really heavy foil. And you keep that meat thermometer uh, probe sticking out so you can keep monitoring it. 
And maybe you put a little bit of sauce, the crunch sauce in there. So you take like a, maybe a quarter cup of apple juice with a little bit of brown sugar and some diced up shallots. It's really nice. And you're going to let it sit, uh, keep going in the smoker. Uh, at this point, usually it's going to go pretty fast. Maybe another hour and you're done. Anywhere between 190 degrees and I take mine off at 205. Um, now, they'll stall at different points and they'll stall for different lengths. It's just every piece of meat is different. So then once it's reached that target temperature, you're going to let it rest. And this is also a really important step. So bear in mind, there's this thing called the danger zone, and it's 140 degrees. Once you get down to 140 degrees, you have two hours to do something with that meat. Eat it, freeze it, whatever. However, I've had brisket stay above 150 degrees for eight hours in a cooler. So you rest it, wrap it in a couple of layers of, paper, of uh, towels, whatever, stick it in a cooler, and it'll hang out there for a long time. Let it rest for as long as you possibly can. And then, really important step here, enjoy it. So with this recipe, you probably won't get those burnt ends. You probably won't get a nice crust like what you may be expecting or used to. That's OK. You will get a juicy, flavorful, and reproducible brisket. And reproducible is what we're all about, right? Here I've written it all up. I drew from my own experience. I went out and researched a handful of different recipes, and I kind of averaged them together for a solution that works for me. So what do making a brisket and a well-orchestrated system have in common, you might wonder? Well, they both involve rest. Thank you. <laughs>